Now we'll get to the more difficult question and that is actually when we have to work out for n the number of times I get interest and it's not really that difficult um, but you can only do this with your grade 12 knowledge for compound interest you'll understand what I mean in just a minute okay so let's solve for n in this question if, um, if you take out a loan of a hundred thousand rand to buy a car how long will it take before you owe double that amount so our question is how long will it take our loan to instead of being a hundred thousand to be two hundred thousand that we owe first of all we are working with compound interest but again let's start with a timeline times zero we have a hundred thousand that we learned from the bank and at this time we don't know what the time is here we're owing 200,000 to the bank we and our interest here is either 11% compound per annum or 13.5% simple interest per annum okay so we're going to look at both of those scenarios let's start with the simple interest one just because it's easier okay so a simple interest Part. We start with our simple interest formula of future value is equal to present value 1 plus i n. And all we do is we need to solve n. And you can see it's exactly the same as solving i. It's just standing next to i. So um, again we, multi we divide both sides with a p so that we get 1 plus i n. We don't need the bracket anymore. 1 plus i n is equal to f over p then we subtract a 1 on both sides to be left with i n is equal to f over p minus 1 and finally to get n on its own we just divide with n on both sides so that we have finally that i is equal to f divided by p minus 1 everything divided by n okay so another way we could have done it is just to have used our values from the beginning so let's go substitute all of our values and uh, I'm not going to do my stock taking for time's sake so our future value is 20, uh, 200,000 is equal to my present value is 100,000 um, 1 plus my interest is now 13,5 over 100 and n is unknown just to show you I could have used my f uh, substitution first so now I can divide both sides with 100,000 so I'm dividing with p exactly the same this side divide by 100,000 and here we see the zeros cancel it's not really true zeros don't cancel but a hundred thousand goes into two hundred thousand twice okay so that I have left one plus thirteen comma five over one hundred n is equal to two so subtracting a one on both sides obviously leaves me with one is equal to thirteen comma five over one hundred n and all I need to do is to solve for n so since I'm multiplying with this I might as well divide by that 13 comma 5 over 100 divided by 13 comma 5 over 100 and let's see what we get 13 point uh, sorry 1 divided by third uh, 1 divided by and in brackets 13.5 over 100 close that bracket so you can see I have my numerator and my denominator everything in a bracket and that gives me 7.4 so n is equal to 7 point let's round it off for 1 so when we round let's just use that approximation sign 7.4 for one so that's how many years it will take okay if we're working in years since we are working in per annum 
you'll see here we're working in per annum, it would be 7.4. Okay, just so you know, that's not four months. That's not four months. Okay, 7.5 would have been seven years and six months. Seven and a half would be seven and six months. Okay, so this is more or less seven and five months almost. Okay, but not seven and four months. This is wrong. Just leave it as 7.4 years. Okay, let's now look at the more complex one. Okay, and this one I want to, that's now for A. This one I want to use the formula. So I've got F is equal to P1 plus I to the power of N. Actually, I'm going to substitute as well. So I have my 20,000 here. Sorry, my 200,000 is equal to 100,000. And in my interest portion, I've got 1 plus, and for the compound interest, it was 11%. 11% compound interest. So 11 over 100 to the power of n. And here we can see my unknown is in the denominator. Okay, I've got an unknown in the denominator, which means I'm going to have to use logarithms to get it off. But before I can do that, I need a base exponent equal to an answer. And that's not what I have. I still have to get rid of the 100,000 here. So divide with 100,000 on both sides. Okay. I divide with 100,000 on both sides. And then I can definitely see, okay, so here I've got, um, if I just simplify that, that's kind of 1, 1, 1 to the power of n is equal to 2. So, just to put this in a different question is, what exponent must I give 1, 1, 1 so that the answer is 2? And the only way that we can do that is using logarithms. So, logarithm says that my exponent is equal to the logarithm of the base, which is 1, 1, 1 with an input that is equal to the answer. Okay, like that. And just how we can calculate that is to say log of 2, that's log of base 10 of 2, and log of base 10 and that. Okay, so some calculators can't input that, so we'll do that. Like mine can't do, can't do a different base than base 10. So I'll take 2 log base 10 divided by 1.11 log base 10 and that gives me an answer of 6,64. Okay, so this, if I round it off, gives me 6,64 years. Okay, that's how long it will take. And here you can see, again, we could have done the same thing. We could have just first used an F and a P there and an I there and do the whole business and what we'll end up getting is that N is equal to log my base look here my base is where it is where is it there we go that's my base okay my answer on this side is going to be F over P because I'm going to divide with the P on both sides okay one uh, sorry one plus i okay and my answer that's going to come in here is going to be f divided by p that is a formula to work out the number of times i get interest when i'm working with compound interest now just one last thing i just want to show you here they don't have to ta give me values so for example they could ask me how long will it take a value to double if it is growing at 11% compound growth? Now here, if we were to do our stock taking, so let's not remember a new formula. Let's use our old formula, compound growth. That's the formula. We want to know how long will it take a value to double. So if we have a timeline, I know that my present value Let's use any present value. Let's use x is my present value at time 0. At time n, I don't know what n is yet. I want it not to be x, but I want my future value to be double that, 2x. 
and let me just show you why that doesn't matter because my future value must now be 2x my present value is now x i is that 11 percent in other words we have 1 plus 11 over 100 gives me 0 0,11 okay to the power of n now look what happens when i want to solve my base and exponent i have to divide both sides with an x and that's where it comes in the x's cancel so that means i just have 2 is equal to 1 plus or actually 1 comma 1 1 to the power of n and you see that brings me back to what i had here okay it's exactly what i had here so and we also see but that's the scenario that we have we had a hundred thousand doubling in other words becoming two hundred thousand and all that that meant was that this portion that's the portion that is multiplying p in other words that is the multiple that p is of f this whole bracket so if we want to know how long will it take for it to quadruple it means that f must be equal to p times 4 which means that this portion is the 1 plus i to the power n portion okay so we want that portion to equal 4 so we don't need f and p okay we already have that all we need is the interest rate okay let's leave that there it's uh, next up I think we're going to start with depreciation good luck in trying some of these on your own